welcome to the five month update on the <sighs> huge <laughs> spring ecosphere. Quite some things have happened since the last update, which was only one month ago. There are a lot, and I do mean a lot, of isopod babies. You can see two of them right here on the leaf. I would say that there's more in here than ever before, so they must be reproducing a lot. These two individuals are already a bit bigger than some of the really small ones. If you look closely, you can always see a pair breeding, just like these two. I am very happy, but also quite surprised, that these aquatic isopods are doing so well in a closed ecosystem, because they are quite big animals, relatively speaking. But it is actually pretty logical. Like bladder snails, aquatic isopods live in pretty much all fresh water, no matter how gross it is. They also actually prefer water with no currents, something this ecosphere provides. This is one of the really small babies. It's only about 2 mm long, which is very tiny. Then I got distracted by this planarian with a really weird head. Now let's talk about the mysterious unidentified water spider. As some of you thought, this is actually a water mite. There are many different species of water mites, native to where I live, but I have come to the conclusion that these water mites are Unionicola crassipes. I based that primarily on the shape of the body. There's a lot of water mites which have this body though, so I looked at the shape, length and angle of the two front legs. Now I narrowed it down to only two water mites. I actually think I have two species of water mite in this ecosphere. Unionicola crassipes and Neumalia fernalis. Here you see a lot of ostracots feasting on the decaying stem of a dead cabomba plant. This bladder snail is starting to grow a beard. A piece of algae is growing on its shell. And there's some ostracot hitchhikers as well.
The same algae is starting to grow on the glass as well, which might become a problem if it starts blocking the light. This is an isopod mold with ostracots in it. They make it look like the isopod is moving. After months, the hydra have returned. There aren't as many as there were before, but it's interesting to see that they appeared again. I tried to do a time lapse to show you how hydra move, that didn't really work. But you can see how active and full of life this ecosphere actually is. Now this is a beauty. I do not know why it has this red slash brown color. Maybe it ate something, but all the other planaria don't have this color. Or maybe it's some sort of genetic disorder. Whatever caused it, the planaria is pretty pretty. You can already see some body parts, like the pharynx, mouth and anus, and the gastrovascular cavity. So, that is what changed in the past month. This ecosphere is still very active and undergoing a lot of changes and shifts in the animals that live here. The ecosystem seems to be doing really well, even though most of the kabomba are dying. As long as this ecosphere stays interesting, I will keep making updates. So, if you don't want to miss those, and if you want to see other projects, well, you're going to have to subscribe. Thanks for watching.